What's up, math scholars and math haters? This is Mr. W. Today we're going to tackle question 12 in the Math 1 questions that North Carolina released this past school year. The question says that a company uses this formula, which has one, two, three letters in it, oh goodness, to determine the total cost, which I assume is T, to purchase S computers and P printers. Going to use C for that. Which formula can be used to determine the number of printers purchased, given the total cost, T, and the number of computers purchased? Now the big idea that this question is testing is your ability to work with literal equations, equations with more than one letter. And these look scary, but there is a trick to solving these that I will actually just um, go through right here. So basically, we need to know exactly what we're trying to find. And since the problem says determine the number of printers purchased, I know that the variable, the letter I'm most interested in is P for printers just like S is the letter that computer starts with. Actually, it's not. That still makes no sense to me. Um, but anyway, if I'm most interested in the letter P, then as I write this equation out using some color, I'm actually only going to write the letter P in red. And the reason why I'm going to do that is because even with these other letters that are that, that I see here, I'm only interested in P. I can just treat these others like their other numbers. All right, so my goal is to get P by itself. And now, if I think in terms of getting P by itself, I can treat this like a regular two-step equation. And I can say, OK, it's being multiplied by 150. And then I'm adding 581s to it. I want to get rid of this stuff. But in what order? And this is where I like to go back to my socks and shoes analogy. Because if you get home at the end of the day and you're wearing shoes and socks, unless you're extremely, extremely talented, and many of my students have tried to do this, but none have succeeded, if you can find a video of someone doing it or take a video of yourself taking off your socks inside your shoes, please send it to me. I'd love the entertainment. Um, we need to get rid of our shoes first. We need to get rid of what's outside our variable, which I guess in this metaphor is feet, before we can get rid of our socks, what's inside and closest to it. Which means, if I see 581s, I'll put an imaginary plus sign in front of that and say, OK, I want to subtract. So 581s minus itself is the same thing as if I were to write 5 minus 5. This goes away. This goes away. Even though there's a letter, we still consider it to be 581s and 581s. We still consider those the same number, which brings me now to t minus 581s equals 150p. Now at this point you're probably thinking this math looks like it was made by the guy who directed Inception. And it does look like it, but there's only one step we have to do. Because once again, ignoring all the letters and all the other mumbo jumbo here, I have a variable that I'm trying to get by itself and it's being multiplied by a number. So I'm going to ask myself, how do I get rid of that times 150? I'm going to divide. Divide by 150 on the right side. Divide by 150 on the left side. 150 divided by 150 goes away. And this is going to be the junk that I'm left with. And I want to look for an answer choice that matches that. And that is going to be choice C. Now you might be thinking, why is it not choice B? Well, the answer is because if we divide one side of an equation by 150, we have to divide the entire thing by 150. It works over here to just cross these out because 150 divided by 150 just equals 1, so this would get me 1p. And I wouldn't even really need to write the 1 here. I could just write p. But over here, we had to take 150 and divide this entire side of this equation by it. So it couldn't be choice b. It couldn't be choice a. Choice d is silly because we divided, not subtracted. But anyway, our only remaining answer is c.